KB1000 here with a keyboard alternative for the iPhone called idid.txt. So what I'm going to do is demo it first, explain a bit about how it works, then I'm going to show you a cool game that will help you learn how to use it in no time. Alright, so here's the standard iPhone touch keyboard. It's a QWERTY keyboard. You simply tap on the keys to enter text. So one of the problems with this keyboard is that you can't feel where the keys are, so you can't type without looking at the keyboard, and you end up sort of having to alternate between looking at the keyboard and looking at the text field to see what you're typing and what you might have mistyped. All right, let's fire up idit.txt. So idit.txt installs a SB settings toggle. To invoke SB settings, you simply swipe the status bar, and to turn on idit.txt, find the idit.txt logo, tap it, and there you go. So what I'm going to do is just tap something out first. Okay, so that was almost 50 words per minute. Well, how does it work? Let's turn down the speed so we can hear things a bit better. I'm going to turn it down to about 15 words per minute. Okay, so text is entered using Morse code, which is a character encoding in which each character is represented by a sequence of short and long elements called dits and dots. So, for example, the encoding for the letter A is a dit followed by a da. Dit, da sounds something like this. So, essentially, the keyboard is just two buttons. One side enters the dits, and the other side enters the dos. So you'll notice that the character encoding for the letter E was a single dit, and the character encoding for the letter T was a single da. Now also, if you hold down a button, it will repeat its element. So again, you'll notice that the character encoding for the letter S was three dits, and the character encoding for the letter O was three da's. Another example is the letter B, which is da followed by three dits. The other feature of the keyer is that if you hold both buttons down, the elements will alternate and repeat. This is called the iambic property. Take, for example, the letter C, which is da, dit, da, dit. So what I'm going to do to key it is tap both buttons at almost the same time and hold down. I'm going to hit the da side just before the dit side so that the da is the first element of the alternating sequence. This way of creating Morse code is called a dual touch paddle together with an iambic keyer. Dual because it provides two switches that can be operated independently. The keyer is the software that creates the proper duration dits and dos and repeating dits and dos when the buttons are down. The basic unit of measurement is the dit length. A da is three dit lengths and the time between dits and dos within the same letter is one dit length. So you set the length of a dit and the keyer handles these on-off signal lengths for you. Also, the time between the end of a letter and the start of the next letter is three dit lengths. So if there's no signal for a duration of three dit lengths, the decoder will try to decode the letter from the Morse code you've entered. Now, the keyer can also be used as what's called a single touch paddle, meaning one switch operated at a time by simply using one finger and dragging from side to side. For example, to send the letter B again, you would start on the DA side and then drag over to the DIT side, wait for the third DIT and release. Now when you use idit.txt in this way, 
you lose the iambic property of the keyer since you cannot have both buttons down at the same time. So to create the alternating pattern, you have to drag from side to side. So C becomes For the demo that I did earlier, I use the single touch interface because I find it easier to create clean code when I don't have to coordinate timing between my two fingers. So what are some of the advantages of iDit.text? Well, first as you've seen, you can enter text very fast. Many ham radio hobbyists send Morse code over the radio waves at speeds in excess of 50 words per minute every day. Second, you have about one-third of the screen or more to hit just two buttons so you don't need to look at the screen while entering text. Also, you have audio feedback so you don't even need to look at the screen to know what you might have mistyped. Now, how do you learn Morse code? Well, there's a fun little typing game for the iPhone called Typing Sebastian, and iDid.Text comes with a plugin for it that adds a couple features to help you learn to type with iDid.Text. You can buy Typing Sebastian from the App Store for 99 cents. Just do a search on Typing Sebastian. The iDit.Text plugin first allows you to change the word list for the first four levels of the game to teach you letters and some punctuation. Here's a switch to turn it on and off. By default, the word list will be on. Well, let's play the game so we can see the other feature that iDit.Text adds. So basically, you're presented with letters or words that you have to type, and you have to type as many as you can before the plane gets to the other end. Points are the number correct minus the number of mistakes you make. You need a certain number of points to move on to the next level. What the plugin also adds is a flashcard type feature, which sounds the current letter when you tap the top portion of the screen. So you come across a letter that you don't know, in this case E, tap the top portion of the screen, listen to it, then enter it, and move on. Oh, there's E again. I know what the sound is, so I can enter it. Okay. So every time you use the flashcard type feature, your number of mistakes is incremented by one. But eventually you learn the letter and no longer need to tap the screen. The game is fun and quite effective at teaching you Morse code. Well, how do you get iDid.Text? It's available in the City App Store for $1.99 which means that it's only available for jailbroken phones. When you jailbreak your phone, you'll have the Cydia app installed. Here's the icon right here. Now, the reason why it's only available in the Cydia app store is because it hooks into every program that launches the keyboard, which is not allowed in app store apps. There are lots of great apps only available for jailbroken phones. You've already seen SB settings, which is the app that's used to toggle iDit.Text on and off and access its settings. It also gives you access to many of your other settings directly from anywhere. Once Cydia launches, you go to the Cydia store and you should find iDit.Text there. Go to the fact for iDit.Text at iDit.Text.com for more information about how you can jailbreak your phone. Okay, so I'm going to end by going through the settings for iDit.Text. All of the settings are done through the SB Settings application. There are two ways to get to them. The first way is the traditional way, which is to swipe the status bar. That launches SB Settings. Then you tap and hold the iDit.Text icon until the settings come up. The other way is if you happen to have the iDit.Text keyboard up, then you tap the info button in the bottom right and that'll take you directly there. Okay, so what you have are the typical settings for an iambic here together with a Morse code table cheat sheet down at the bottom. You can go to the FAQ at idit.text.com for documentation on the settings and you can get there directly by tapping here. From there you can follow me on Twitter to get updates on the program. You can contact me and you can find much of the information that's presented in this video. Thanks for listening and hope you enjoy I did dot text.